Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma. In this video, we will be discussing about API testing interview questions and the approach to answer them. The answers I have written in detail so that while going through the answer, we can also understand the concept and I have considered Postman and Rest Assured both in this um, video. If you are a fresher or experienced uh, professional, you can watch this video for interview preparation or to learn about API concepts. So let's start. What is the difference between put and post method in REST API and when should each be used? When you are working on an e-commerce application, imagine that you need to add a new product. Okay, and let's say you need to update an existing one, the one which is already there, but you need to update that already existing resource. So we have two methods for that. One is post. Post is used to create a new product. The client sends data and the server decides the new ID and location. This is like, you know, you are saying, hey, here is a new item. Can you create and store it? So that time you will use post method. Example, post slash products with a body like you will pass some, you know, parameters, name, laptop, price, this then you will get a response back from server and server will generate an ID and the details like ID 101 will be generated by server. And what is put? It is used when you already know the ID and you want to update or you replace it. Like we know the ID 101. Now we want to update some value in that. We will use put, right? It is an item item potent which means sending the same put request multiple times won't create new items it will only update the existing one so i hope now you understand the difference between post and put with the help of one example key takeaways to remember you can say use post when the server should create a new request new resource and put when the client when we know what is the resource already but we want to update it to some other value or we want to create it at some other specific url we use put what is POJO in API testing and how is it useful? In real-time testing framework like rest assured, POJO means plain old Java object. It's just like your regular Java class with variables, getters, setters, and no other special behavior. It represents your structured data in the code. For example, when we say like we are creating a customer, right? You test a system, you create a user registration, or you create a customer. You would define a POJO something like this public class customer customer is the class name and you have some fields here name email id you have added them as private which are the um, access specifiers in java and string is the data type so this basically is your pojo class why is it useful you can reuse the pojo for multiple test cases it can also help converting java objects to json or JSON to Java, that is separate concept. JSON, uh, Java objects to JSON process is called serialization and JSON to Java is called deserialization. It makes code more readable and maintainable. Question number three, how do we set values in POJO class during API automation? To use the POJO in your test, you need to create an object first and then set it value. Right, this we know. This can be done using setter method or constructors. Setters are used to set the values in a method and getter methods are used to get the value out of a method. Then you can give one example. How to convert a POJO into a JSON string for API request. In API automation, you often need to convert Java objects into JSON format for sending request. This is called serialization. This is a very important question. What is serialization? When you convert Java objects into JSON format for sending request, we call it as serialization. And using the Jackson library, we do that. Like you create a object of object mapper class, and then uh, you store that uh, value in a JSON string object, and then you make it print on the screen. You can give some example. This helps in debugging and sending data in structured way. Tools like REST Assured also support automatic serialization if you pass a POJO directly. Next question. What is JSON path and how is it used in API testing? JSON path is a way to extract data from JSON response. Right. Sometimes when you send a request, you get a response. Sometimes it is in the JSON format. So JSON path is a way to extract data from JSON response, similar to how your XPath works for XML. Right. 
after an api call you often need to verify or reuse data from the response then you can give some example like let's say you are creating a new user so response will look like this the user has id name and email id so now if you want to extract only id of this user how will you do that you will say response dot json path dot get string what is that user dot id user dot id will fetch the id out of this user object and will give you the result okay this is how you create a uh, json path and this is how it is used in api testing what is query parameter in rest api and how is it used query parameters are used for filtering sorting and no narrowing down result in a get request for example you want to fetch only active users from your system right you have some you want to fetch only active users so this is a url that you are sending in rest assured then you will use query parameters query param and then status active okay sort you are sorting it by name when user status code 200 right then using the help of query parameter and by giving the field name and value key and value you are extracting it you are using the query parameter to filter out the value to sort out the values these are always appended by a question mark a question mark in the url can you see this question mark here status state uh, question mark status equal to active yeah this is query parameter question number seven what is a path parameter and how is it different from a query parameter path parameters are part of actual endpoint url and usually refers to a specific resource right for example to get the details of user id 201 you will just say get me the details of user whose id is 201 you will say get a path param id 201 it will fetch you the id 201 the result of user 201 this is path parameter path parameters are used to locate specific resources you can remember it in this way that path parameters are used to locate specific resources whereas query parameters are used to filter filter out the result query means question right you are questioning somebody so you are questioning a resource to give me that value that means you are filtering out the result or passing any optional values how to create a json object body dynamically in java without pojo so without pojo if you want to if you have to create a json object can you do that if you want more flexibility use json object from org.json then you can give some example like this and send it as a header content type in in postman if you are aware of using postman in the like in the uh, down section of uh, postman we have this content type where you see the response right so that content type you can set it as application json and then request body to string post users this will help you creating a json object without a puju this is useful in data driven testing what are the major challenges faced during api testing in real world projects so this you can relate with your project if you have worked in api testing in your project some of the challenges are token expiration api often require jwt or bearer tokens to handle expired uh, such type of situations are very challenging chained api calls now change api risk calls means one api response needs to be input into another if worst one fails then the entire test case will fail environment differences api may have different uh, may behave differently in different type of environment like it may behave differently in qa it may behave differently in uat this type of challenges we have faced data state management api may return stale or inconsistent data if not reset before test error handling proper testing 400 or 500 level type of errors and verifying the response structure is again a challenging task right these type of examples you can give and maybe you can relate more with your real-time project how do you extract data from api responses using rest assured in real-time testing in end-to-end -end testing extracting data from responses is essential for chaining or for validation for example you send a post request to create a booking right uh, how will you create a booking in postman you will send a, a post request right and then how will you extract the booking id using json path dot get id and then id you will give it will extract the data right so this is about the post request which is uh, uh, first you have posted to create a booking booking and then you are extracting the booking id yeah what is the maximum size of a payload that can be sent via the post method 
So this uh, couple of questions I saw on LinkedIn also. So I have taken those questions from LinkedIn because they were only questions. I thought I will add answers to that and prepare in this video. What is the maximum size of payload that can be sent via the post method? There is no strict limit defined by HTTP protocol for a post payload. However, the maximum size is usually de determined by server configuration settings and some you know network policies. Example. This you can relate with your uh, project like I have uh, um, related. You are testing a file upload API feature, right? You notice that file is larger than 10 MB and it is showing you message that, you know, file not accepted, rejected. You are not able to do it. This might be due to your web server setting, your uh, some application level restriction. Maybe server is doesn't have that much memory and maybe some browser issues. So as a tester, you should check how much data is accept, uh, accepted. Maybe you can check in the requirements if you have or you can approach you know developers or maybe business analysts like uh, what is the limit on the data that is being accepted and validate response messages like okay what are the response matches ma messages we are getting 413 payload too large and ensure the app gracefully handle large or malinformed payloads can a get request be used instead of put to create or update a request no a GET request should never be used to create or update data. GET is meant to be safe and idempotent, which means it should not change any server state. GET means to retrieve the values. Imagine you are uh, creating data through a GET API when someone simply uses a visit a URL in the browser. So what will happen? It will create duplicate records. Correct usage. So how do you use it? Uh, you use post to create a new resource, you use put to update an existing resource and then like you should know about all these methods very nicely with one example so that if an interviewer asks you anything you should be able to just justify like put is used to update, delete is used to remove, post is for creation and get is to read the data. How many types of authentication methods are available in Postman or rest assured? Are you aware of any authentication methods? Uh, yes, I I have I'm aware of a couple of authentication methods like uh, basic authentication is there where we give username and password and BRI token is there which takes uh, uh, like uh, login um, JWT token after login and then API keys are there where static keys passed in the header in the header section OAuth 2.0 is there which we I mean which is being used in Google and Facebook uh, type of uh, login uh, digest auth most more secure than basic right but hardly being used now NTLM used in Microsoft Enterprise API so these are all the authentic authentications available in Postman so if you open Postman maybe in the drop down you will see all the different type of tokens but majorly what we use are basic a basic authentication bearer token api key oath 2.0 this is for your understanding i have written basic auth simple username and password authentication for apis bearer token used after login yeah often with oauth 2.0 api key static key pass which uh, which we pass in the header or sometimes in the query oauth 2.0 this is being used for google and facebook login uh, digest oath more secure than basic but rarely used ntlm is used in microsoft's apis example rest assured ka exam you can give rest assured example uh, given auth preemptive basic user password for BRI token you send it something like that so the syntax little bit you should be aware of that how is request chaining carried out in rest assured in automation first you need to understand what is chaining chaining means the output of one api is being used as the input to another api right so means let's say you have um, you have some APIs where uh, output of one API is uh, generating where you are using that output as an input to another API that is called chaining API chaining. First you create a booking and using post you are saying post booking then you are extracting booking ID from the response use booking ID to in 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 put or delete to update or remove that booking right so you, you are doing one function one operation then after getting the result of that operation you are using it to input it to another uh, function something like that yeah i hope it is clear
Okay, so here we have what are serialization and deserialization in rest assured and why are they important? So first you should understand what is serialization when you convert Java object to JSON. It is used for sending requests. We call it as serialization and deserialization when we convert JSON to Java object, the vice versa of the first one, right? This is called deserialization. This is used for reading responses. It simplifies data handling. It reduces the risk of manually building incorrect JSON files. It enables reusable cleaner test code. Then give the example. What is the best way to avoid logging sensitive data like tokens or password in rest assured? In real time testing, logs help debugging, but sensitive data like password and API keys must not be expo exposed. So best practices for um, for uh, keeping sensitive data safe is you should not be using dot log dot all in in your production test cases. Use dot log dot if validation fails to log only the failing request. Make sensitive data manually before logging. Yeah, something like this you can use. Question number seventeen: How can we get the size of a JSON array from a response in Rest Assured? So you want to validate how many records an API is returning, right? First, you get the uh, size of that. For example, verifying if a list endpoint returns 10 users. Let's say uh, this is an array and uh, you want to get the array size. Then how will you do? Get list user.size. This will return the array size. And then you can use assert.assert .assert equals will give you the uh, size of the JSON array. Yeah, that time that you can use and explain. What are the API keys or authentication tokens and how they are used in APIs? API key and authorization tokens are used to secure APIs, right? As the term suggests, authorization tokens means you are uh, authorizing somebody to access that particular resource in normal terms. API key a static string provided by the server passed in headers or query parameters and bearer token dynamic access token usually returned by a login endpoint right when you use oauth 2.0 then th that time this token is being returned by the endpoint url think of an api key as a guest pass and a token as a personal id card that expires so let's i'll give you one simple example let's say you go to some airport and we have this airport lounges over there right without the um, access card without the um, uh, airport lounge pass you cannot avail the facilities of that uh, lounge right so you need to have some id so that is like your authorization token when you have the token then you can um, utilize the facilities of a airport lounge how do you perform security testing using api testing is that possible like have you ever done they may ask you like have you done any security testing using apis then you can say uh, security testing is uh, done uh, to secure our apis to um, to keep them safe from unauthorized access injection attacks and data leaks so some of the authentication techniques we have used in our uh, project like we have used uh, broken authentication where we have tried the apis by sending expired or invalid tokens and we have also tried accessing another user's data. Send request in loops to simulate DDoS attack is, is I think, more than enough. And data exposure, if uh, see if error responses leak uh, database paths or any such thing. And then you can give an example. If you have not done security testing or if you have not done anything in the project in the real time, then you can be very honest. You can say, uh, no, uh, I'm sorry, we have not done any security testing except the basic authentication and OAuth 2.0 uh, such type of authentication. I have not done this much into detail. Just be honest in the interview and try to explain as much as possible so guys this video was on demand i hope you like it if you like it please do let me know in the comments and let me know what all topics you want me to cover in the upcoming videos with that um, i'll bid you goodbye and i will see you in the next video bye guys